Bonjour. Good morning. I grew up believing that if we want to have an impact on society and change the world, let's name it, that would be coming from the public sphere or a political uh, engagement or through an association. I didn't think this could be performed through companies by generating profits. I was not thinking that uh, companies were not uh, profitable to society, but I thought at that time that it was not the main engine of uh, companies. It took me 10 years to unbuild this preconception. Today, I believe that companies are the stronger lever to change in society. Today, I work in what we call uh, so impact investing. Impact investing is all about investing with a view of having a yield, a social yield and a financial yield at the same time. When I met my partner, Pierre-Olivier, in 2007, He'd spent 10 years in big investment funds performing uh, different operations, bigger and bigger financial operations. And we had very different roads and different pathways, but we met at the same crossroad and we had the same ambition. Use finance, use capital, use money to try and have an impact on society. We created Citizen Capital in 2008, two months before the um, breakdown of Lehman Brothers. And we started with 9 million euros, which, believe you me, uh, is a very little money, 9 million euro for a, a startup in that world. But now, um, um, 10 years almost uh, down the line, sorry, seven years down the line, we have two very nice operations and we are tr starting to leverage funds uh, and we have 60 million euros that we manage. We have two main objectives, first of which is to try and be by the side of entrepreneurs who integrate social objectives or environmental objectives, challenging objectives in the strategy. So they have a business model which integrates social or environmental objectives. Now, what we really try to source are companies that through their growth, through the potential power of their economic business model, are going to scale up their social impact. And this scalability is going to be found if we find a balance between the different levels, the levels of social impact and the levels of economic impact. I'm going to give you the example of Basel Telecom. Basel Basel Telecom is a company in which we invested. Our mission is to try and help elderly people have a, a, nicer, uh, a nicer life, improve the quality of life. So it's providing them a number of services, mobile teleassistance, help elderly people to shop online, call them to remind them to take up pills. The founder, Yves Morel, when he founded his company, and after, well, that was actually after creating two or three startups, is really interested in elderly uh, questions. And he thought, oh, well, I'm going to create an association, but through an association, I'm just going to uh, reach out to 50 or 100 people. So what he did he was to create a mobile operator, and now he reached out to 20,000 people. He has some 10,000 uh, incoming calls every day. Uh, because basically the heart of the challenge is to restore communication because people don't speak with each other uh, anymore. So now, Basil Telecom has proven its scalability. We've performed our first impact study on this very company. And this study comes to demonstrate that the subscribers of Basil Telecom really value, they very give value the reasons why Basil Telecom was created. 75% of the subscribers say that they feel safer going out. And 79% of them also tell us that they are more in contact with their um, bosses, with their family. The second objective 
the second of our objectives is to favor social mobility. Social mobility is paramount to the creation of a citizen capital. According to us, it is a key subject for the world, but it's also a key subject for France. We live in a country where each individual, whatever his or her background, can try and envisage his or her future, or can envisage that they can thrive and fulfill themselves. And Piketty demonstrated this uh, underlying rationale. Contrarily to the previous generation, it is not possible to change your social condition through a salaried, uh, a salaried job. So basically, if you start with nothing and you hope to, to, to leave something behind for your children. You'd rather try and make a living out of your own entrepreneurship rather than being a salaried. And studies is not changing this. So it means that we live in a world where birth and the rights that are yours by birth are more important than work of value, which means that 15% of a given age class are unsuccessful at school, and at the end of the line, they don't find a job. And behind those people, there are talented entrepreneurs who, are try, who manage to shift the situation, and, capitan, uh, and citizen capital, a company, is interested in those people, and we try to help those people. And amongst those people, there is a dynamic, there is a rational, and we think that this is possible. I'm going to give you an example of investment. Michael Ajaj created a company called Media Money. He arrived in school at uh, at age, um, dropped the school, started working in catering climbed up the ladder and uh, realizes that uh, the catering industry could uh, increase the number of, uh, of uh, customers if they managed to reach out to the people working in the offices nearby. He created his first company um, at 18 years of age. And now this company is able to uh, log in the uh, databases of uh, a number of companies and they manage the the uh, booking and reservations for those customers, and they are getting, and they are also uh, paying back one euro per meal to the uh, Resto du Coeur, which is a charity, a French charity. So, well, you may say, what's new? For years, a number of associations and companies have made possible to have self-made men, people who, starting by enough, uh, on nothing, have made a successful career. But what's new, basically, what, 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 what's the impact investing? What, 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 what's new? What's, what, what is it bringing them? So, well, you, there are about 100 people here in the public. Maybe 10 of you only, uh, well, maybe 10 of you are thinking or contemplating uh, creating their own company or having the business model of that company evolve. And I'm going to give you four reasons for which it is uh, that there are reasons to, to believe. And today is a special moment. Today is the right moment. The first reason is that if you have a company which tries to change society, you create value. So there is no incompatibility between profit and impact. We used to live in a world where you had on the side the one doing good and the ones earning money and making profit. The vocation today of impact investing is to reconcile, it is to reconcile both worlds and infuse and diffuse in the entire economy. Not only in the areas of insertion, environment or health. I'm going to give you the example of Camif. Camif, I think many of you know that brand. It's a brand which was uh, purchased by an entrepreneur, a web-based entrepreneur. Uh, so Camif is a web-based uh, company now. Camif now is uh, launching the first connected piece of furniture, which was designed by its users. 
90% of our turnover is, uh, comes from uh, furnitures which are manufactured in France. You have to know that 95% of the furnitures in your living room come from all over the world or have traveled the world because they were manufactured in China, while in Camif, 90% of those are manufactured in France. So they have more and more customers, and the customers are loyal because they adhere to the notion that purchasing act should have a meaning. So it's in a very competitive market, but being in a very com competitive and volatile and fragile market, they still make 35% increase in that turnover on a yellow basis. This means that we can all be an actor of change. Before that, the state was steering innovation through Airbus, through the military. But today, more and more, you can provide a service which has a tremendous impact on the entire planet from any place in the world with a limited capital investment. Salman Khan, for instance, created the Khan Academy which reaches out to tens to thousands of children through providing math classes. But we're creating the uses, blah, blah, car and RBFB. Those are companies that we are fostering by our use. And this really creates and poses a question on the future and tomorrow a company. If the creation of value is really based on communication between people, then who owns a company? Does it belong to a shareholder only? You know, I'm a shareholder myself. The rationale of value creation for the shareholder, is it a sustainable scheme for companies uh, which create value based on the intelligence of people? Funds like ours, of course, I've been asking ourselves these questions for years. How do we share value? How do we distribute value? When we've, when we've uh, done our work in the company, uh, we've increased value, then what should be our remuneration? What should be the remuneration of shareholders? We are just in the early days and starting the reflection on this, we have a policy of sharing the fruits of growth when we managed to create value. And every time we were able to create value, we have uh, paid 10% of all the value that we have created to the salaries, salaried staff of those companies. So the bonuses in our companies are connected both to our financial performance, but also social performance. But all the questions, all the topical questions about bonuses, those shocking bonuses that are being paid off, there are also questions on the way value is going to be distributed in creation. And this is a very topical uh, question. A third reason to believe, and maybe you're not going to agree, but I think we're entering an era where the public resources are becoming scarce, scarcer and scarcer. Uh, obviously, the organizations are going to have to change their business models and sources of revenues. And you have a number of entrepreneurs entering the market with services which in the past were thought to be uh, market services. But this is no longer the case. Pôle emploi, the job, the job uh, company, the job uh, service, is not providing the same type of services that Mosaic RH is provided. You know that Mosaic RH uh, are uh, job hunters, and they provide jobs to people from less favored neighborhoods. And obviously, Pôle emploi doesn't have a type of agility or flexibility that Mosaic RH has. So there is a market tomorrow for you, well, hopefully, you uh, young entrepreneurs, to have an impact, to have a social impact. So you're going to have a hybrid role to play. You're going to come and complement the state services, that services provided by the state, and you're going to provide this for the collectivity. And there is a last reason to believe is that the uh, more numerous you'll be, the numerous uh, entrepreneurs 
in impact investment, the more money we will have to finance you. Because, you know, things have changed since we started five or six years ago. In the past, when we went and, and, and met with investors, because we have to go and, and convince investors, we were politely received. People would uh, listen to our presentation and people would be a little puzzled and uh, would look very nicely and would say, oh, that's very nice. You're very brave. Well, let's see if I can put you in contact with our foundation. This no longer happens. The people we're in touch with, the services, the asset managers of the big companies we're in contact with, are now familiar with impact investing. And they have means, they have more and more financial means, and they have means to invest in all funds, even if the objective, you yield objectives to the men. In 2014, 10 billions were invested in a project with an impact on society and the environment. So the more numerous you will be, the more uh, probability there is that we still are on the market 10 years down the line. So we need many ambitious entrepreneurs, and we need uh, uh, ambitious entrepreneurs in impact and environmental investing. So I'd like to tell you, well, it's difficult to work in that industry, to work on, that, on those topics. You know, every morning when we come to work, we have to deal with this exemplary. We have to try and reconcile concepts that are completely foreign, which are completely, uh, it's like darkness and light, finance and society. It's a complex world. It's not easy every day, but it's highly satisfactory. One of the main satisfactions I have is that we create connections, human connections with entrepreneurs and uh, very interesting connections, which I thought were not possible. I didn't think I could have that sort of relationship in that type of business with people. And in fact, people, those entrepreneurs, are still astounded to meet up with people working in finance and, and, and finance people not interested only in figures. And I think it's only the beginning. Thank you.